Welcome back. I am in conversation with Mr. Ranjit Bhattacharjee, business leader and environmentalist. Mr. Bhattacharjee, uh, you have just launched. Uh, you means the under the banner of the Eastern Himalayan Nature Nomics Forum during the event. You have la also launched a website, Elephant Country. org, and you also launched another very very interesting initiative that is the Elephant Friendly Tea. Uh, what does all this mean? I believe that actually Assam uh, uh, looks for brands. Uh, while uh, we have incredible India, while we have God's own country, and now awesome Assam, these are buzzwords. I do believe we have products which we can actually romanticize Assam with, mm -hmm. and one of them is Elephant Country. Mm -hmm. What if people say, "Welcome to Elephant Country, Assam." What if we say that this product, which is made here, the potatoes and onions and the uh, pepper and the tea, is actually elephant friendly? What does that mean? It means that you can come to a place where you have an entire area which is actually mapped out, where elephants can pass, people are there, and everybody lives in harmony. This certification is like any of the rare earth certifications that people are wanting to do, but this is originated in Assam, mm -hmm. and this is. something that we should be proud of that it is not just a website we have launched a portal and that portal is actually a helpline which is the elephant secretariat for asian elephants in the world so that means this helpline is in the cloud and this helpline will be able to help everybody who has asian elephants starting from southern china True. onwards extremely good idea but my question to you mr bhatakur when we say that elephant friendly When you get reports from a Sam elephant being knocked out by moving trains, elephants having no food to eat, roaming around in herds with baby elephants in tea gardens, people chasing them, uh, even attacking them, and some of them, uh, you know, becoming fatal. Uh, uh, I mean, do you think uh, we are in a really tricky situation? We are in a very tricky situation, but the situation is not an everyday situation. We ha have a habit of highlighting. the negatives it is true there's a conflict and that conflict has happened because primarily because of two reasons mm -hmm. there are more human beings and there's less land that we have left for the animals because with more human beings you're encroaching on elephant and we are also raising up artificial barriers so therefore like fence and other things and we are attempting to raise artificial barriers but we are raising human settlement which is a natural barrier not an artificial barrier which actually comes in the way of elephant movement we are saying elephant country will have all of this and more but will be able to map out where the elephants are comfortable to go where the elephants are comfortable to stay so there will be designated corridors there will be designated pathways and watering holes i think what the elephant really looks for is in search of food and water so do you have a plan in mind do you have yes. a plan in hand we have a plan in mind and we've got a plan which we could easily present to the world it will be ready in a few weeks time it's called the kalindwar project in boroland where man and uh, animals will live in great harmony and also have a prosperous forestry so who is going to implement this uh, because there will be a lot of uh, funds necessary for this we've got balipara foundation which is doing it we've got two banks which are supporting us and hopefully at some point we will form a green bond for assam which will green help bond yes which will hopefully the green bonds details are being worked out as to say what is this green bond and how do we actually direct it to communities so that they can build their infrastructure for tourism and also live in harmony with the forest this green bond will help the forest to be regenerated at four la layers from the grass root to the shrub right up to the canopy level so we will have not just yeah. one monoculture but we'll have many types of forest which will be growing there and the human beings will be able to take 25% of the forest for their food so it is important that the green bond which we think will be called the elephant friendly bond or the elephant country bond will be something that will support it so you've got tourism and you also have prosperity of agriculture and forestry absolutely uh, now you see i mean like uh, we we have been trying to involve uh, we are in north east india uh, we have this uh, man elephant conflict that uh, you know you know well there are people working in the indo bhutan region uh, but when we talk about elephant movement when we talk about the asian elephant for example uh, it's not just india and bhutan it is india bhutan myanmar cambodia and even yunnan province of china so uh, is the balipara foundation in your elephant projects looking at this whole wide area or you are focusing on uh, just assam and india bhutan 
The Elephant Country uh, portal focuses on all the areas that you've mentioned. You would have noticed in the presentation that we made a few days ago uh, that uh, the Elephant Country talks about elephants have no borders. Yeah. Elephants live in a borderless world. Right. This borderless world has to be addressed. We are not handling politics. When nature is there, when plants are there, botany is there, when there is meaning a spread of botany and elephants, we cannot talk about these borders. We have to talk about eco-region. That's why we talk about the Eastern Himalayan Naturenomics region. Our, our boundaries is from Nepal to Myanmar, from China to uh, uh, meaning uh, Bangladesh. And therefore, this is the region that we work in. This is the elephant territory region, and this is the region we want to actually support. Absolutely. Elephant territory there, and it's elephant sands borders. On that note, we shall go for another short break. Stay on, we'll be right back.